Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. Awesome. Well, we're going to talk about hot keto breakfast ideas for beginners. Hot. Hot. So hot is in like exciting and hot is in warm temperature because we don't always want just a cold breakfast. That's kind of boring sometimes. You want a hot keto breakfast. And if you're a beginner, this might be a great place to start. So you might be familiar with chia seeds. I've decanted these because I use them so often, but they make a wonderful and easy cereal. And everybody's always concerned about eggs and bacon. Can you have them on keto? What's the answer? Yes, 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 you can. Your eggs and your bacon, these are staples, right, in the keto diet because they're higher in fat, good source of protein, and low in carb. Those are beautiful things. Chia seeds have zero net carbs. I know. Eggs have one per, um, and bacon what, three slices per serving, and you're looking at zero net carbs, providing you don't get some kind of flavored maple bacon. So that's a good deal. So these omelets, you know, these are just some of the ideas you might already be familiar with for hot keto breakfast size, hot keto breakfast ideas for beginners. But I want to ask you a question. Have you made a chaffle? A chaffle? You're like, a, a what? A what? A chaffle. Have you made a chaffle? Give me a thumbs up, make a comment if you have, and tell me what your experience has been so far. Now, if you're not familiar with what a chaffle is, there might be one person left on the internet. It's okay. It's basically a cheese waffle. So it can be made with cream cheese. It can be made with mozzarella cheese. There's all sorts of different ways to make chaffles. There's not just one recipe. But how do you like your chaffles? How often do you have chaffles? Does it bother your weight loss? A lot of you experienced folks out there might be wanting to chime in at this point because you have wisdom about chaffles. It's easy to eat chaffles because they taste so good. I mean, seriously, you guys, when you think about a waffle, like an ego waffle, and then you look at this chaffle, you're like, <laughs> they look pretty much the same, right? And they taste just as good. I'm telling you, it, it's mind blowing. So today I'm going to teach you guys a favorite quick little recipe I have for chaffles, and it's just as good as the high-carb alternative of waffles, but a lot lower, 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 lower in carbs. Much, much, much lower, and just as tasty. Now, I'm going to call this a McGriddle-style chaffle, a McGriddle in the spirit or nod, if you will, to my good friend McDonald's. I'm throwing the package around. So if you reminisce about those good old days... This might be something that really tastes yummy to you. You'll be like, oh, I like, I like McDonald's. I like McGriddle. Therefore, I would like Stephanie's um, McGriddle chaffle, chaffle recipe today. So I'm going to teach you how to make this. It really takes less than five minutes. I'll probably yammer a little bit too much than I need to, but go ahead and just bear with me. I'll, I'm going to try to go faster today. Um, so just so you know, this recipe today is going to yield four McGriddle chaffles. So it's going to yield four. That means you're going to make four chaffles, four individuals, and that means it serves four. Okay. So here are the ingredients that you need in case you can just think, okay, do I have these at home? Yes, I do. I already brought this one out. This is just full fat mozzarella cheese shredded. Do you have that at home? Yes. Put it in the comments. <laughs> there you go. Now I buy mine at Costco because I think it's a great price. Tell me where you get yours. Is anybody out there still doing it by hand? Anyone? Are you shredding your own cheese? I don't have time for that. It's just too much work. I can't handle that. It's too much. That's where I get into the dirty keto, the lazy keto. You know, I'm a little dirty. I'm a little lazy, so I'm going to take shortcuts. Uh, you're also going to need two eggs. Okay. Do you have eggs at home? Yes. Now, I like this recipe to be a little bit eggier because I want to get some protein in me. A lot of the chaffle recipes out there don't have any protein, and I'm like, eh. It's one of my uh, philosophies that you need to have a little bit of protein at every meal. Just a little bit. You don't have to count it or get all crazy. But have some. And putting some eggs in your chaffles is a quick and easy way whoo, to get some protein in your breakfast, in your hot keto breakfast. Um, you're also going to need a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And check your expiration, you guys, because 
you might be surprised. You'll flip it over and be like, oh my goodness, that expired like four years ago. And then you're wondering why none of your baked goods are rising. So make sure you check. These are like, what, a dollar, 50 cents? So replace them often as needed. You'll also be needing about a, let's see, one teaspoon of vanilla. And I also get my vanilla at Costco. Get the good stuff. I like a lot of vanilla in my products and in my Dirty Lazy Keto recipes, you'll see. The reason why is I want it to kind of counteract any of those weird cheese tastes or almond flour tastes or coconut flour tastes. I feel like the vanilla counterbalances that. So you will find that I use quite a bit of vanilla in my recipes. And I call for one teaspoon in today's. Now this next ingredient's kind of fun. This might be why it tastes so much like the McGriddle at McDonald's. But I'm gonna call for two tablespoons of sugar-free syrup. And people ask me all the time, what's your favorite syrup, Stephanie? Okay, I'm gonna, I usually don't like to say my favorites, but I'll show it to you. <laughs> I'll show it on the screen. Okay, it is Mrs. Butterworth's sugar-free syrup. I love this stuff, it's so yummy. I like it because it's thick and it reminds me of the log cabin syrup that I grew up with, or the Mrs. Butterworth that I grew up with in the bottle, you know, it's so cute. I like a thick syrup. And so, you know, you can use whatever you want, but that's just my little, shh, that's my secret. You're also gonna be calling for two ounces of cream cheese in this recipe. Two ounces is the same thing as four tablespoons. And if you didn't know this already, if you look on the side of the package, like once you open up your brick of cream cheese, there's these little lines along the side. You might've wondered, what are those for? <laughs> those are your one ounce lines. So you can just use your knife and press there and that way you can tell and monitor your servings. So two ounces of cream cheese is gonna be two of those little lines, basically a half a package of cream cheese. And you're gonna want that softened. I usually microwave it for like 10 seconds, no more, no less, or just set it out for a long time. And you're also gonna need a half cup of mozzarella cheese. I think I already showed that one. Oh, it's hiding behind me. Right, you need a half cup of mozzarella cheese. And all of these ingredients that I just mentioned, again, are going to serve or create four chaffles. Okay, I'm trying to go fast today. Is it working? Is it working? You're like, oh, Stephanie, she talks so much. I know. It's hard for me not to jibber jabber, as they say, but I really look forward to these chats with you. I, they're like my fireside chats of Keto Land, and it just gives me a chance to connect and bond with you. I want to create like a keto community where we're all talking and in the comments we're sharing, we're asking questions, we're contributing. That way we can learn from one another. That's a real passion of mine. And so that's why I'm not just like, here's the recipe. See ya. I mean, I really care what you think. I care about your opinions and your shares. And that's why I try to make this more like a, you know, like a girlfriend conversation. So bear with me, people. I know I get the criticism, but I can't help it. Can't help it. Okay, so you've got your ingredients. <clears throat> you've already checked to make sure you have everything. So now we're gonna get started. I'm gonna put on some gloves, because that's, you know, ultra clean, even though I'm in my office by myself. <laughs> and the first step we're gonna do when we go ahead and make our hot keto breakfast, chaffles, McGriddle chaffles, is we're gonna spray our waffle iron with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to use some butter flavored cooking spray. These are zero grams of net carbs. So nice, right? We love them. And I'm spraying this before I plug it in. So here I've got my waffle iron. This is just an old rinky dink thing from a Black Friday sale. I'm pretty liberal with my spray. And now I'm going to plug it in. You might be wondering why. Why does she spray it before she plugged it in? I'll tell you. Let's see if that's heating up. It's kind of weird plugging in kitchen appliances in the office. There's a lot happening in here. I'll just check on this to make sure it's heating up. But yes, you want to spray it because... Um, if you've ever read the side of a package of one of these sprayer uh, bodily things, you know there's a heat maximum. So if you spray it on uh, something that's already hot, like have you, ever, have you ever tried to spray this stuff on a grill that's already got fire? What happens? <laughs> Oof! Right? It goes fire everywhere. 
Yes, so you don't want that. Okay, good, it's heating up. So you wanna spray it on first, be liberal, and then um, heat up your waffle iron. So I'll close that just so it can heat up a little faster. So I've got all my ingredients like pre-measured over here, and I'll be showing them to you as I, um, and reminding you about the, the measurements. But first of all, you wanna grab a medium-sized bowl, okay? And a, like a little spatula or a heavy spoon. You don't need to use your mixer for this. A simple hand, doo -doo -doo, it'll be fine. And you're gonna combine basically all the ingredients I mentioned so far, except for the cheeses. So hold off on the cream cheese and the mozzarella cheese. We're gonna do those at the end. So let's go through them one at a time and make sure they got everything. I'm gonna make sure I have all my notes in front of me. Okay, so we're gonna have how many eggs? You remember? Two eggs beaten. Put those in your bowl. And then we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Not expired. <laughs> Did anyone find theirs expired when they looked? That'd be funny. You're like, oh my word. All right, we're gonna use a, a one teaspoon of vanilla, the good stuff. Two tablespoons of sugar-free syrup. Ah, there's your McGriddle um, syrupy flavor. Delicious. Love syrup. Can I lick the bowl or is that tacky? Will you tell? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna stir this up nicely, make sure it's all blended very well. Blended, blended, blended. Basically, you just wanna make sure that uh, baking powder gets separated and stirred about. That's really my main concern. Because once you add all the cheeses and stuff, things get wild and crazy in the bowl. And then you might end up with a glob. That would be gross. Glob is a technical kitchen term. Kidding. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm curious, what do you guys like better? Do you like the cream cheese style waffles? Do you like the mozzarella cheese style chaffles? Do you prefer the ones with almond flour, without? I'm curious. Put it in the comments and tell us why. I'm always curious what, what's going on out there. So I just added my two ounces of cream cheese and I put it right in the bowl, it softened. So now I'm just gonna continue to mash it and stir about. Mash and stir, mash and stir. I'm adding my cream cheese that's been softened in the microwave. And that was two ounces. I wanna make sure I get it really good. I can't be in a hurry and then not do a good job stirring. And then last but not least, I'll add my half cup of mozzarella shredded cheese. All right. How'd that go? Is everybody tracking? Any questions so far? How often do you guys make chaffles? Did you share that? Have you ever made one? Will this be your first? I have quite a few chaffle recipes on the YouTube channels and on my website. So don't be afraid to search around. There's a great uh, French toast cinnamon, uh, cinnamon sticks chaffle recipe that's in my Sick on Keto video where I recommend like foods for when you're not feeling good. And I do a show and tell of that one too. There's a bunch. But this one is so yummy, you're gonna love it. So easy to make. So I got it all stirred up here and meanwhile my uh, waffle iron has been heating. And what we're gonna do next is just scoop up one quarter cup of the batter and pour it into one of the waffle iron squares. So some of you have like a two pack like me. See how there's only two squares? Some of you might have a four pack. Some of you have a single. It doesn't matter. You can go at your own speed and then repeat as necessary. So if you have four squares, you're gonna knock out the whole recipe in one sitting. If you have one square, you're gonna have to do it four times and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Don't be caught up in the hype about the chaffle maker. There's a lot of hype about chaffle makers and you don't need that. Any waffle iron will do. I, again, I bought this at a Black Friday sale. Love it. Get your quarter cup measuring cup here and you're gonna scoop up one quarter cup of batter. Ta-da. It's really loose. I'm gonna show you real quick. See how loose and gloppy it is? That's okay. Gloppy in a good way, not gloppy with baking whatever glops, but just little bits of cheese. That's fine. Okay, so I've got a quarter um, cup of batter, and I'm going to put a quarter cup in each square of my waffle iron. I'm going to do this without spilling on my carpeting. 
because my dog Lula will have to come in and assist me if I do that. Here we go. One. We're cooking live. Hey Siri, set a timer for 30 minutes, 30 seconds. 30 minutes and 30 seconds, oh, no, no. starting now. That is not correct. Hey Siri, set a timer for 3 minutes, 30 seconds. That was funny. 3 minutes and 30 seconds, counting down. Okay, that's better. My bad. I got too excited. So we're going to cook our chaffles over here for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Were you guys laughing earlier when I said the other thing? <laughs> My bad. Three minutes, 30 seconds is what you're doing. And while you're cooking this, can you hear it? It's like, it's like sizzling. Do you remember sizzling back in the olden days? I used to love sizzling. Those were so yummy. Steakums, remember those? Um, anyway, I want to just warn you about the ooze factor. It's pretty common, okay? And the ooze factor, what I mean by that is you're your batter might just leak out the sides of your chaffle maker. And that's, that's a real thing. It is. You can probably put it like on a platter or on a paper towel or something to catch that. That might make cleanup a little bit easier. While I'm saying that, I'm going to do that too. Just in case. There we go. It's just the way it is. When you're pouring your batter, try to aim in the center of the squares, and that way there's less ooze. And when you're measuring the quarter cup, I was, I'm being serious about that. And if you have a little leftover at the end of your rounds of making chaffles, don't pour it on top. Uh -uh. Save that and just make a little scrap uh, chaffle. And the reason why that could happen to you is if your eggs are really big or if you did like a heavy, I don't know, heavy cut on your cream cheese, something could go off in that way. But most of the time, this is going to serve four one-quarter cups for a total of one cup batter, making four chaffles. Okay, remember we said that four, four, one quarter cup, four chaffles. So it is cooking away. I'm very excited. And while this is cooking, I'm gonna spin the wheel. Oh, you thought I forgot. Let's see who can win a prize from commenting. Woo, big whammies, big chaffles, big chaffles. Oh, oh, Ooh, how exciting. Today's um, prize is you pick. <gasps> Ooh, never seen that one before. It's in a new piece of handwriting and everything. So you pick. If you want to win a prize today, put it in the comments. Say, I want to win, and then tell me what it is you want to win. Because you know I have so many prizes I'm always showing. I've got everything from lunch pails to decal, like blank decals for your fridge, fridge mag magnets, um, pot holders. Everything's over here. Books. Oh, my goodness. Million and one prizes. So let me know specifically what you want to win and put it in the comments because you might be our lucky winner. That's so exciting, right? Should I give you like a ting ting for good luck? I bought this the other day at the Goodwill. Don't ask me why. I used to teach kindergarten, so bear with me, people. I thought it would be fun during a moment such as this. Uh, when I was teaching kindergarten, you guys, I weighed almost 300 pounds. I was so exhausted trying to keep up with all those five-year-olds. They were so much work and trying to get down on the floor with them and then get back up. Woo! It was hard, hard work. So losing 140 pounds gave me so much more energy. It's given me more flexibility. I can get up and off the floor. Seriously, these are issues. And, you know, fitting more comfortably in chairs and just being able to ride bikes and hike and go for walks and, and be with my family in a way that feels good. Like I don't feel stressed or unhappy. Woo! My Siri is, is talking to me. So folks, it's been three minutes, 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and open my chaffle maker, waffle maker. Ooh, it's all sizzling and talking to me. I'm going to hold it up. Oh, it's very hot, so I better not burn myself. Can you see? I'm trying. And um, what I'm going to do is use a plastic fork to remove them from the mold. The reason I do the plastic fork is then it won't damage the, um, you know, the Teflon part. I'm going to hold it up here in front of the camera. Delicious, right? Doesn't it look just like my beauty product I showed you earlier? Looks just as good. Oh, and it's so warm. <gasps> oh. I'm going to pull out the other one so it doesn't burn. It's been in there three minutes, 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Look at that beautiful set. Oh, yes. Fabulous. 
I cannot wait to make a couple more because I've got more batter, right? Yeah. Well, that was a good time, and it only took uh, three minutes and 30 seconds. Here's that little timer. Some of you might have gotten one of these when you did a pre-order bonus. I always do that when I do books. Um, this one says Dirty Lazy Keto. Isn't that cute? What should I do for my next book? I need an idea for a pre-order bonus gift. If you have one, tell me in the comments. I would like to hear your ideas. Okay, guys, so I want to let you know how many net carbs these have per serving. Have I told you that yet? I didn't. Do you have a guess? Well, if you were to look at those ingredients and kind of tally them up, what would be your estimate per chaffel? So we had eggs. Those are like one carb each, right? Okay. Um, you had baking powder, nothing. Vanilla, nothing. What else? Um, a quarter cup of mozzarella cheese. How many carbs is that? Do you know? It's like probably one or two, depending on what brand you use. And then we had some cream cheese. Now, cream cheese is a tricky one. I learned this from one of our listeners and viewers and watchers. She told me that according to the brand of cream cheese you have, there's a wide variety in the number of carbs per serving. And I was like, oh! And sure enough, I went to the grocery store and I inspected all of the packages. I was reading the sides and I was like, no way. There is a big difference. So some of the cheaper versions must use some kind of filler. And I'm like, oh, heck no. So now I make sure to buy the good stuff. And that way I save myself a little bit of carb on the, um, on the, end, on the end game. Because that's important, right? These, they add up pretty quickly. So if anybody guessed um, that each one of these chaffles is going to basically have one or two net carbs per serving, I'd say that you guessed correctly. I'd say it's about one or two grams of net carbs per serving, depending on the size eggs you use, depending on the type of cheese you use, depending on, you know, the type of cream cheese you use. So all those things play into it. So count it as one or two per. That's what I would do. And I want to just tell you as well, if you liked this little video today and you want to make some more chaffles, I'm going to point out a couple more that you may have overlooked because there's no picture. Whenever there's no picture, you guys are like just, whoo. Just goes right by you. I know, we're humans. So in the Dirty Lazy Keto No Time to Cook cookbook, go to page 61. This is one of my favorites. It's a double chocolate chip, or double chocolate chaffle, double chocolate chaffle recipe. It's to die for. It's on page 61 of the Dirty Lazy Keto No Time to Cook cookbook. And if you're not a chocolate person, double chocolate, and you want to have a chocolate chip chaffle, chocolate chip chaffle, say that three times fast. Um, check out in the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. Go to page 56. 56. Again, no picture. So you probably just went whoosh. And these are, that is another wonderful, easy chaffle recipe to make. So I think you'll love it. Now when you are about to enjoy your chaffles, what do you like to put on yours? Personally, I like to put a little bit of real butter. Not margarine, none of that low-fat business. I like to just a little bit so I feel fancy. Right? And then I like to use real, I call it real, <laughs> real sugar-free syrup and put that on top as well. And that way it just tastes like, you know, the olden days when I was having a delicious, yummy waffle. But this one's way better because it's lower in carbs and it tastes great. And I bet somebody's going to ask, can you freeze these? Absolutely. What I do is I put them one per Ziploc bag. If you put them too many in one Ziploc bag, they kind of crumble together. And then you're tempted, of course, to eat them all because they're stuck together. But you can put them in the microwave to warm up. You can put them in your toaster, toaster oven. And they're delicious. I keep these on the bottom of my freezer in individual bags with lots of heavy stuff over it so I forget about it. <laughs> that way, when I have an emergency, they're there. But I don't want to look at them too often because then I'll just eat them. Isn't that embarrassing? I, don't. I have issues, apparently. So thanks so much, you guys, for tuning in and for celebrating and for learning this quick little recipe. I just want you to know you are not alone on this journey. You are not. I am right here to support you every step of the way, whether it's a keto breakfast, a hot keto breakfast, a soup, a salad, a dinner, a late night binge, whatever it is. I'm here to help you. I'm here to inspire you or to motivate you or to offer you counsel and just be your friend. I want to be that person 24-7 that you can tune in. That's a real live person who's gone through this. Not some doctor, not some magical dietitian who thinks they know everything and they're wah, 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 wah. No, none of that here. 
I'm with you, sister and, and man or whoever's watching. <laughs> I'm with you, and I've been down this journey, and I feel like, you know, it's doable. You can do this. And it's little tricks like this. You know, little fun products, little copycat recipes make this worthwhile, make it doable, make it flexible, make it something you can do forever. So make sure you're on the mailing list, right? Go to DirtyLazyKeto.com, sign in, put your email. First email starts right away. And that way I can remind you whenever there's something new happening. Um, and next up, if you like this recipe, you'll probably like to watch the next video, which is an easy cinnamon roll recipe. Just as simple, just as fast, and it's a quick and dirty, um, I shouldn't say dirty, quick and dirty keto a cinnamon roll recipe, and I'll teach you how to do it. So I'll link that up next. Okay, you ready for your round of applause? Yay, 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 I sound like I'm at a theme park over here. I'm doing my flabby arms. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.